Hello Overclockers, I'm 8pack, Head of R&D here at Overclockers UK. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the second tier of high-end desktop CPUs by AMD that have just currently launched. I'm going to be covering Threadripper 9970X and the Threadripper 9980X. And what we're going to be covering is the usual temperatures, under load, power draw with different overclocking, so PBO2, overclocking itself, and then comparing that all against stock. And obviously we're gonna be doing a bit of recommending what cooling you should use with your setup, what PSU, and all those kind of juicy bits. So, if you wanna find out more about this high-end CPU by AMD, continue to watch, and let's get into it. So, let's firstly discuss a little bit about these CPUs. Like I've said, they're both Threadripper, the high-end desktop CPUs, and the second tier of CPUs uh, available on the AMD high-end desktop. The CPU socket in this is the STR5 socket, uh, and the supporting chipset is the TRX50. These particular CPUs come with uh, four memory channels, so it's a quad-channel setup, with up to 6,400 megahertz supported out of the box. Now, what is important is that this CPU cannot, unlike its counterpart, go into a WRX90 motherboard. It simply will not work. Whereas a Pro Tier 1 CPU can work in a TRX50 motherboard as well as a WRX90 motherboard. So if you are interested in this particular line of CPUs, make sure that you plump for a TRX50 board. The CPUs themselves, the 9970X has 32 cores with 64 threads should your software support simultaneous multitasking. The base frequency of the CPU is 4 GHz and the maximum boost frequency is 5.4 GHz given that the CPU remains below or equal to the default TDP of 350 watts. This particular CPU, uh, the 9970X, has 128 MB of L3 cache. It's on the latest Zen 5 architecture, which means it's in line with the tier one high-end desktop and also the Ryzen models that are currently available. Recommended retail price of the CPU is £2,239 and a massive 99 pence. Next, we'll look at the AMD Threadripper 9980X. This particular CPU is a 64 core part which has 128 threads should you have software that supports simultaneous multi-threading. This time the base clock on the CPU is 3.2 GHz with again a maximum boost frequency of 5.4 GHz given that the CPU remains below the default TDP of the CPU which is 350 watts. This particular CPU has now 256 MB of L3 cache and is again on the Zen 5 architecture. You can expect this CPU to be priced around or equal to £4,480 and zero pence. So, that's a little bit about the specific SKUs. Now let's discuss the test bench that I use for testing the hardware. So, I use the ASRock uh, TRX50 board, and alongside that I installed 4 times 16 gig of 4800 MHz memory. Remember, this CPU is a quad-channel CPU, so to max out the memory bandwidth, you need four sticks. So obviously I installed four sticks. I updated the board to the latest BIOS, and you must do that to support the latest generation of CPUs. In terms of cooling, I used Nexlus Threadripper CPU block uh, with Nexlus pumps, Nexlus RAD, which is a 360 in this case, and the Nexlus Fluid. Again, with uh, this particular CPUs, with them being very high TDP, certainly the 64 core unit, you could probably indeed overclock more and keep the temperatures in better check if you used a larger than 360 mil rad. I'm obviously choosing the 360 mil rad, however, because it's compatible with most mid tower cases, which to go to 480 or multiple rads, uh, it's generally a super tower style case that you need, which most of our users or viewers don't tend to have. 
Testing was on Windows 11 as usual, which I updated to the latest drivers. Uh, and uh, obviously, in terms of storage, I was using the usual Western Digital SN850X, uh, one terabyte capacity, which is easily enough to hold my uh, benchmarking suite, which is as usual, the benchmarks I like doing and not what the viewers like. And finally, I think I should just say again, as I did in the last video covering high-end desktop, that V-Ray is not scaling ideally past 32 cores. So we'll include the V-Ray scores in this benchmarking suite uh, when we come to showing the scores. But like I say, it's fine on the 32 core part, but it's not scaling on the 64 core part. So that should be something the viewers bear in mind. Okay, so we've gone through the platform and we've gone through the specifics of each CPU. We've also talked about the testing methodology that I'm going to be using on the testing system. Now, let's talk about the power draw and temperatures of these individual CPUs. Firstly, at stock, the power draw of the 9970X was measured at 350.8 watts, and the 9980X was measured at 351.7 watts. So, pretty much exactly what you'd expect of the 350 watt default TDP. In terms of temperatures, at stock, uh, these two CPUs were very easy to control the temperatures with the 9970X maxing out at 69.8 degrees C and the 9980X maxing out at 59.1 degrees C. So, having talked about the power draw and the temperature of the CPUs, let's talk about tuning the CPUs. Firstly, I did some PBO2 tuning and on this I set uh, the motherboard as the limit. I set the scaler at 5x and I set the negative offset at minus 15. And this gave us a, a nice boost in overall performance, both single core and multi core. With the single core, you now had boost to around 5.7 gigahertz when only a couple of uh, cores were running, or 5.6 across both SKUs when five or six cores was running, which is a really solid boost. And then under multi core loads, you were down to about 4.8, 4.9, or a straight four, five gigahertz, depending on how hard you were loading the CPU. So that's what we got in terms of clock frequencies for PBO2 tuning on both of the SKUs, and those were the settings that I used. At PBO2, we had a power draw on the 9970X, maxed out at 556.6 watts, and on the 9980X, this was 789.7 watts when you maxed it out. With PBO2 tuning, the 9970X maxed out at 91.6 degrees C, and the 9980X maxed out at 95.1 degrees C. All that being said then, let's now discuss the stock results of the CPUs versus the PBO2 tuned CPUs. On the 9970X, by PBO2 tuning, we had 31% in temperature increase and a 59% power draw increase. This resulted in a single threaded performance going up 3.54%, multi-core performance on R23 going up 9.9%, Cinebench R24 6.4%, V-Ray went up 1.2%, Corona 1.3 went up 5%, Corona 10 8.9%, and Blender rendering went up 10.1%. So a full 10% faster there. So when you're comparing all those benchmarks on the 9970X, we saw an overall improvement of PBO2 of 6.4%, which is a quite a solid amount given that you're only making four or five changes in the BIOS. The 9980X, we saw even more improvement. Temperature this time did go up 60.9% and the power draw a whole 125%. However, R23 single core went up 11.7%, R23 multi core went up 24.4%, R24 went up 13.9%, V-Ray 1.6%, but we've already discussed V-Ray and scale on 64 core, so again, that wasn't uh, outside the realms of what we'd expect. Corona 1.3 went up 9.2%, Corona 10 went up 17.5%, and our Blender rendering test 22% faster. So overall, we had a 13% improvement across all the testing on this CPU just from PBO2 tuning. Again, a very, very solid result for making five or six settings in the BIOS. In terms of manual overclocking, which fixed the core speed at a certain clock throughout the entire benchmark suite, for the 9970X, 
I overclocked all the cores uh, with 24 seven stability to 5.1 gigahertz without issue. Uh, on the 99 ATX, which is a 64 core part, I overclocked all those cores to five gigahertz 24-7 uh, stable, again without issue. And finally, when manual overclocking these CPUs, on the 9970X we had 521 watt uh, power draw, and on the 9980X we had a 827.74 watt power draw. The 9970X maxed out at 87.6 degrees C, and the 9980X maxed out at 88.4 C. So in all those instances, uh, the temperatures on a 360mm rad uh, didn't really cause us anything for concern. Uh, I mean, they are much above uh, stock for your PBO2 tuning and your manual overclocking, but still within what's safe for the CPU. And obviously you do get, like I said, quite a good amount of extra performance for uh, tuning each individual SKU. Now look, let's look at the overclocked results. And firstly, with the 9970X, at a fixed 5.1 gigahertz overclock. In this, we saw our R23 single core, 8.2%, our R23 multi-core went up 7.4%, R24 went up 5.6%, V-Ray, 0.6%, Corona, 1.34%, Corona, 10, 7.3%, and Blender render was 10.9% faster. Overall, this left us with a 6.2% improvement by using manual overclocking. And this in fact was uh, less than our PBO2 result. Uh, and the reason for this is, uh, especially obviously on our single core, threaded, the boosted performance is uh, 5.7, whereas this is only 5.1. And also on our multi-core, because the power draw effectively of this part is relatively low and the cooling is very good, it can boost almost to or equally as high as manual overclocking while still having the benefits of PBO2. But if you did notice, the, the temperatures was allowed to go a bit higher than manual overclocking, so there is that, I guess, as a negative, but overall performance, PBO2 was better for these reasons. Basically, because the power draw is low and the cooling is high, so the CPU can boost higher for longer uh, without any of the drawbacks to have a fixed overclock where you're stuck at 5.1, no matter what you throw at it. The 9980X, however, when we overclocked, uh, we overclocked this to five gigahertz on old core, the temperatures increased 49.5% against stock. Power draw was up 135% against stock. Single core was up 2.4% uh, against stock. R23 multi-core was up 27.3% against stock. Cinebench R24 was up 18.8% against stock. V-Ray was up 5.23%. Corona 1.3 was up 13.9% against stock. Corona 10, 11.5%. Blender rendering was 23% faster when you compare to stock. So overall on the 9980X, by doing a static overclock, uh, the overall improvement was 14% versus stock. So now we've completed our review of the latest uh, high-end desktop CPUs by AMD, uh, both the non-pro and the pro SKU. Let us compare at stock frequencies, the 9980X versus the 9985WX just to see which SKU would be appropriate, I guess, for which end user and the strengths and weakness of each SKU. So in fact, as far as temperatures at stock go, the 9985WX, that's the Pro CPU, was 3.4% hotter, which you would obviously expect because you're having to feed power uh, to more memory channels, uh, and obviously you're having to feed power to the extra features on that particular CPU. The power draw of both CPUs, even though the 9985WX was hotter at stock, the power draw was actually the same. In our benchmark of R23 at single core, the 9985WX had a score of 8.7% higher. In R23 multi-core, the 9985WX had a 1.8% higher score. Cinebench R24, the Pro CPU had an 11.7% higher score. In Vira, the Pro CPU had a 1.1% higher score. In Corona 1.3, the Pro CPU had a 2.5% higher score. In Corona 10, the 9980X actually had a 0.8% higher score. And in our Blender rendering test, the 9985WX or the Pro CPU was 
5% faster. So only about one or two seconds, which is certainly probably just benchmark error. So I would say that those two are probably exactly the same. So overall, the Threadripper Pro uh, 9985WX had 3.8% higher performance than the non-Pro 64 core part. Now obviously this improved performance was simply due to extra memory bandwidth given by the octo channel of the Pro CPU versus the quad channel of the non-Pro CPU. And the octo channel uh, obviously does help with performance, but not in every single instance. Um, I did find actually a few other benchmarks that octo channel helped even more. Things like uh, with CFD, such as OpenForm, or things in FEA, which were quite specific, such as Optistruct and Abacus, where the improvement from buying a Pro CPU was actually larger than the 3.8% that we found from my usual benchmark suite. However, this 3.8% extra uh, wasn't really that much when you compare the price difference of the two SKUs in the non-Pro CPU to the Pro CPU, the cost difference is a whopping 60% which, you know, for the end users, that's certainly that something that they should be considering. Do they really need the extra PCI Express lanes? Do they really need uh, octo-channel memory? Uh, and if not, then the non-pro SKU seems a really good value proposition. Of course, the pro CPU does have other features that are more akin to the data center or the server platform. Uh, these are mainly security features, such as AMD Pro Manageability, AMD Pro Business Ready Support, AMD Pro Secure Processing, AMD Shadow Stack, and AMD Memory Guard. So, in conclusion, do I like the CPU? Yes, I do. For many reasons, really. It's offering you huge performance and huge gains, and you can increase these gains by overclocking or PBO tuning, and there is a massive amount of different settings in the BIOSHIP that you can explore to gain even better results, given that you have the time. Obviously, to get the best out of these CPUs, you do need good power delivery to the CPUs, a good quality motherboard with good flexibility in the BIOS, which the Asus board that I tested and also the ASRock board that I have here uh, next to me tested did have and worked, uh, both of them working flawlessly across everything that I threw at them. And then obviously you need the good cooling with a bare minimum for this type of core count, 32 or 64 of a 360 millimeter rad and even bigger if you want to extract even more performance. These CPUs are currently available at Overclockers UK to buy off our page, but if you want something with our overclock settings already put into the BIOS with the CPU block that I used to test, which is the Nexus block, then obviously check out the links in the description below for my overclock bundles. This particular CPU will be available in 8-pack PCs moving forward, and of course, should you require this CPU in any system that we can build here at Overclockers, please do contact either our retail team or our B2B team if you are one of our business customers. And finally, as always, don't like the video, don't subscribe to any of our socials, be it over as you, clock as you care, or mine, because I simply don't check and I don't care. But if you do want another great video to watch, anything including me is fabulous, but the last Threadripper Pro video I did was a particular special moment. Check those out.